danger points. Donald brought Caldy up the valley to the exchange siding where he was soon offloaded by a crane. His driver and fireman and the manager were there. They all said goodbye and thank you to Donald. Then they lit Caldy's fire and while they were waiting for the steam, they looked over him carefully. A very good job, they said at last. Caldy sizzled happily. It's lovely to be at home and in steam again, he said. I'm longing to have a run with Catherine. Come on then, said his driver, and they trundled to the shed. Catherine was pleased to see him and they went for a short run. I've had to go with Lord Harry lately, she said. He takes risks and frightens me. When I warn him, he laughs. Never mind, comforted Caldy. It'll be all right now. Later he met two old friends, Ernest, number two, and Wilfred, number three. After some happy gossip, Caldy asked, Who is Lord Harry? He's one of the new engines, they said, who came while you were away. He's number six. Alaric and Eric are seven and eight. They're nice, quiet engines. But old Harry's a terror. Next afternoon, Lord Harry rolled up with a reluctant coach on his way to the platform. Stupid things, he grumbled. They're all scared of coming with me. You're too reckless, said Caldy. That's why. Rubbish, I am up to date, that's all. I can go twice your speed in perfect safety. All the same, we don't take such risks on mountain railways. There's no risk. Why, with my superheat... Oh, interrupted Caldy. It's superheat, is it? I'd have said it was conceit myself. Lord Harry snorted furiously away. Ooh, screamed the coach as her wheels ground on the curves. Be careful! Ooh, snorted Lord Harry. I like things to be exciting. Every wise mountain engine knows that you do not take risks and that points must be taken slowly, for there the rack rail can have no guards. Steady, boy, steady, warned his driver, but Lord Harry paid no attention. He was thinking what he'd say to Caldy next time they met. There's no danger, he boasted, storming up the final slope. That patched up old ruin was talking nonsense. The telephone rang in the shed, and Caldy's crew were joined by the manager. Lord Harry's off at the summit, he said. We shall have to go and put things right. So they collected some workmen and the tool van and set out at once. It was getting dark when they arrived. Lord Harry's shape loomed against the sky. He had come off the points and blocked both roads of the station. Wilfred was there with his coach, unable to start his journey down. The passengers buzzed around Lord Harry like angry beads. He was feeling harassed. The manager pacified the passengers while Caldy buffered up behind to take the strain when the men levered the engine's front wheels onto the rails. Wilfred, he called, who is this wreck? It's Lord Harry, didn't you know? <laughs> it looks like old Harry. It's fat as old Harry, but of course it can't be old Harry. Why ever not? You see, old Harry's an up-to-date engine. He could go twice our speed in perfect safety. Tee-hee-hee-hee, tittered the coaches. Lord Harry seethed in silence. They pushed Lord Harry out of the way and took the passengers home. Then Caldy helped him back to the shed. It, it, it was that coach, sir, blustered Lord Harry. She never... No tails, said the manager sharply. It was your fault and you know it. You upset our passengers and damaged yourself by taking risks. We cannot have that on our mountain railways. But, sir, that's enough. You will stay in the shed till we have decided what to do with you. He turned and walked sternly away. <laughs>